I did a TikTok video yesterday that was pretty short because I only have one minute to convey my message. Uh, so I wanted to take a little more time and luxuriate over a principle of an area that I find to be uh, a huge passion of mine, which is the central forelock. This is a, an area that has been oftentimes disregarded by the inexperienced hair surgeon because they look at this as, hey, let me just stick some hairs up on top of the scalp or let me get you a good hairline. But the central forelock is a critical, critical area of importance to achieve excellence in terms of uh, aesthetic results for hair surgery. So what is the central forelock? Essentially what it is, it sits maybe a few millimeters to a centimeter behind the hairline, so it doesn't include the hairline per se, but it's right here. It's the central zone that sits like a circle, or if you want to call it a circle, just in this zone right here behind the hairline in the dead center of the scalp. Why is the central forelock so very important? There are a lot of reasons, but the first big reason that I talked about in my shorter version of this video is that that's the area that if it looks thin, you still look balding. And other areas, if they're um, still thinner, then you may not look that bald. Now, th there are some exceptions. Someone's got a great central foreline, they've got a big frontal temporal recession. Okay, well, that's the area of importance for that person. So I'm not saying universally everyone needs it. But for both men and women, that central forelock can play a very critical zone. Again, there are some exceptions. Someone's got traction alopecia where they've got lost the, the temple zone, or they've got a scar there. Okay, I'm not saying everyone needs it. Or if someone's got a crown baldness, then of course the front looks great. We don't need to do the front. But in general, when we're talking about the frontal scalp, an area of critical aesthetic importance is the central forelock. The central forelock is the zone that if it looks thin, it looks weak, and that's why it's so important. Another component that people talk about of why the central forelock is so important is that it plays an important role in every angle that someone sees you from the frontal view. So what am, what am I talking about? So this way you see the center and both sides. When it's tilted to the side, you don't see this side, but you still see the central forelock. And so every graft here plays a role in all angles of view from the, of the patient for the frontal half. Of course, the backside, you're not going to see it. But all angles in the front view, every graph here is almost double the value. So that's a second reason the central forelock is so important. So if it's so important, what am I doing differently during the surgery and during the graft placement that, is, that I can do, do to accomplish better, better results? So first of all, density of the sites. So I want to make the sites dense enough to create better visual impact. So a lot of people are very focused on graph numbers. Of course, if I don't give you the graph numbers, you're not gonna get a good result, but graph numbers are really not the issue. It's about design. And so recipient site design is the number one reason why I'm so passionate about hair restoration, because I love design. I'm an artist. I paint every morning. I paint portraits. I just finished my son's portrait this morning. So I love painting. I love design. And this is like paint and brushing, I get a number of, of graphs, I look at how am I gonna allocate those graphs. So the allocation is really, really important. How I allocate those graphs allow me to achieve the best visual density for you. And, and, it's, and so the first thing is a concentration of density. Now, if you just put really dense graphs right up to the hairline, it doesn't look natural. So you gotta fade that from one hairs, two hairs, back to three hairs, so that there's a gra gradation from no hairs to hairs. Otherwise, you put these large three hair graphs and central density right to the frontal hairline, it looks weird. So you need about a centimeter to, to grade it, go back. But once you get beyond that first centimeter or so of the natural hair flow, you need to get density. So how do you get density? First thing I just mentioned is the density of those, of those sites. The second thing is angulation. If the angulation is very high, the graphs look surprised, and they don't create visual density. But look, take a look at this. You see the shadow in this video that I'm casting on my scalp? Shadow makes it you can't see the scalp. So by creating a lower angulation, you get a denser result because you're covering the scalp and it looks more natural. In addition to that, if you wear your hair sort of like me, comb back on itself, you get a double shingle effect of this and you get even more visual density in this area. So, and it also draws your eye lower so you look like you have a lower hairline even though you may not have low, but this doesn't give you that. It looks unnatural, you can't comb it, and also it, it goes back. The other part is that all of my um, graphs 
go forward or slightly converge, they don't splay open like a book. A junior person making these sites, they make the sites splayed open to follow the curve. This is why when I teach students how to make recipient sites, I always tell them, you've got to make your recipient sites on a curved surface because a right-handed person naturally makes sites uh, splayed on the left and two straight on the right. I see this all the time. That's why when I teach my students, I need to watch them. They can watch me, but they're not gonna learn a uh, diddly squat. I have to watch them. When I watch them, I see that their hands on the left and the right look different. So I've gotta make them low angles, high density, and they've gotta go forward and not splay open. So that's critical for that central forelock zone. Then the last part is graft allocations. So if I'm harvesting with FUE or strip, I'd segregate out the strongest hairs I can, the hairs that are maybe the darkest, the hair, now you don't want a patch of dark in the middle, but you want to have um, the, the strongest hairs, three hair grafts. If there are four hair grafts, I, I separate those grafts out. The silly thing is my staff, as I told you, have, have, have come from different chain outfits, uh, two big ones in Dallas, I won't mention who they are, but essentially, and the stories they've told me are so ridiculous. What they're doing at uh, uh, these chains is that they just, they want to meet their graph counts and business people are running it. They want a number. They, they actually dissect these th beautiful three hair graphs into single one hair graphs. The survival is garbage. And so what I want is to preserve everything. When I'm harv harvesting FUE, when I'm harvesting a strip, I don't ask them to split the graphs. I want the graphs unified because the unification allows me to put more density in a smaller zone. And that's what's beautiful. And they're paint, paint brushes to me. If I use a big heavy paint brush or a small paint brush, it's exactly how I paint a portrait. It's how I paint anything. It's the same way I paint a scalp, is that I want larger graphs, of course, staged behind this, to be focused on the central forelock. And these are all the ways that I get better visual density. The other concept that was talked about briefly in my shorter video was the extended forelock or extended central forelock is behind it because that also, if I put my hand all the way back here and you look at it from the side view, if I can get the whole extended forelock back density, you don't see through it as well. Now, to be very honest with you with the extended central forelock, I think it plays less of an importance because the way I prioritize areas in a generic fashion is priority one, priority two, priority three, priority four. So it only takes a priority after the frontal temporal corners. So everyone is different. As I just told you some exceptions at the beginning of this video, this may not apply to you. It is a general blueprint. I've written, I've written nine textbooks on hair transplant. My new book that's coming out in literally two to three weeks um, has this diagram. I, I'll probably do a TikTok video about uh, uh, sort of programmatic design of how I give generic principles to the, my students about where priority zones are. So the huge thing is prioritizing it. I, I wanted to talk to you about the central forelock because I'm very passionate for you to understand how important it is, especially if you're a hair surgeon not understanding this principle and you're just allocating all the graphs evenly throughout or placing the same one, two, three hairs like you don't care. That is not a good policy. Allocation of graphs, distribution, is the reason why people choose me. One of the reasons, uh, besides painlessness, easy, 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 I knock you out during the surgery, but really that quality is the critical element difference between just thinking about, oh, how many graph numbers do I have? How many graph numbers do I have? How many, how many did you get, Dr. Lamb? It's not the most important question.